Well, I want to thank you for uh, your patience in getting this recap to you. Thank you to everybody who joined us for the webinar on uh, Wednesday, the 22nd. And my name is Paige Niamber. Uh, I did a little bit of an introduction. And this is really, I think, for people who have not used the service before to get an idea about what I do. Um, and for the people who use me already, uh, an opportunity to see some ideas that should be on the radar coming up. Uh, I consult radio stations on marketing and promotions, and in 2023, marketing and promotions covers a gamut of stuff, but yet, so far, uh, tower maintenance has not fallen under uh, the purview so far, but that, of course, could change. Um, I consult a couple hundred stations globally. In the U.S., I do it on Barter through Ed Mann, Mann Group Radio. I do it for cash and interesting offers. Globally, Canada and other nations, I do it for cash. And the stations that use me successfully and correctly, and again, everybody uses me different. Some of the stations use me for writing copy for promos. This morning, I was writing a, a Taylor Swift promo for somebody. Since 4% of people play contests, the only real reason to do contests would be to make promos and to have excited winners. And so many of the promos right now and the imaging for contesting is just wallpaper. So anything that will get people's attention is going to work. That's the art of promotions. I referenced the other day, WDJX in Louisville, they did a thousand dollar group contest, which everybody does. And they're, you know, so exciting again, that 4% of people play them. They did it as, you know, it doesn't have to be a thousand dollars. It could be a thousand dollars in beer. It could be a thousand dollars in tacos, which by the way, I think would get people's attention, which is the art of promotions. They did it as win a thousand dollars in ceramic cats or the cash equivalent. The imaging was done by a crazy cat lady and it pulled the highest numbers in alpha in terms of engagement, just because they did something differently. Um, the stations that used me successfully used me for, uh, for coming up with sales ideas. Um, I had a mentor project who started in Grand Forks, North Dakota and ended up in, at Hot 97 in New York. And when I was teaching her about promotions, I said, you, you know, if I was to look back at the five worst promotions in my career, and there were many to choose from, the five worst were promotions that I did verbatim. I did them as requested by clients. Um, I would never have the audacity to go into a fast food franchise and tell them how to make hamburgers, but they feel that they can tell us how to do radio promotions. But I told her, I said, you have to do this deftly. When a salesperson brings you an awful idea, if you go, gee, wow. You about did yourself. You know, I thought the thing with the pickles was your stupidest idea. This, this, this wins though. Well, you're going to be seen as a speed bump, and uh, when you're a speed bump, you are halfway out the door. You have to work with them, get them excited about an idea. Uh, in 2023, it's very similar to 2009. Um, I referenced the other day the fact that uh, the CBS stations in Florida, West Palm, Orlando, Tampa, all got together in Orlando in, in summer of 2009 to plug the dike, you know, try to stop the, you know, the, the flow out the door of, of revenue. And the things that we walked away with it were that ideas will move spots. Uh, with one of the stations, one of the Midwest communication stations I did, in the first month I worked with them and with a chain of convenience stores, we created an idea that they bought and basically it paid for me for two years. And that was in the first month. Ideas will move spots. Be creative. With so many stations just bringing the same stuff to the clients, any iota of creativity is going to get your foot further in the door. The second thing that moves spots is copy. And the best reference to that that I can possibly imagine is in the 1970s, late 1970s, there was a chain of women's clothes, young women's clothing stores in the Twin Cities called Hurrah. And the spot was a young woman tap dancing and singing the jingle. And it went something like, this is a slightly unusual radio commercial for a slightly unusual store, three, four. Hurrah is the name and what they sell there, is, they're slightly irregular, hardly even care or see or care. And then um, as she's tap dancing, this guy with the voice pops in, talks about the sales that they're having, and it ended with the girl going, and she's tap dancing. And the name of the store is her Rot Street Four. Forty years after the fact, I'm at a soccer game, and somebody yelled hurrah, and the woman next to me, unscripted, unprompted, went, Street Four. 
that's that's a winner. I did a blog about it. And a woman from an ad agency in um, Denmark emailed me. In 1978, she'd been an exchange student at Bloomington Jefferson High School in Bloomington, Minnesota. And she's now at an ad agency. And they were talking about great campaigns. And she, she said, this is it. This is hands down the greatest thing ever. Did I have a copy of it? She'd been Googling, trying to find it. So ideas and copy. Um, Hallmark holidays, you know, you always have to have something on the air. And then what you have to do, take advantage of what God has given us. And God has given us Mother's Day, back to school, Halloween, high school football, New Year's Eve, Groundhog's Day. He's given us all these things. We should take advantage of it. Then that's what we did with CBS in Orlando. We sat down and we mapped out every Hallmark holiday for the rest of that year. And each station came up with two promotions for each of the Hallmark holidays. And if one of them sold, then it was a home run. That's one of the Cox, one of the Cox general managers does is he, he wants a Hallmark holiday, a sponsorable thing for every Hallmark holiday. And we get caught in, we have to give stuff to people. Uh, no, we do not have to give stuff to people. It doesn't have to be a contest. It needs to be content. It needs to acknowledge that it's Mother's Day. There were stations that missed Valentine's. And when I say missed, there was nothing on their social media about it. There was no contest. There was no imaging. There was no uh, web graphic like Google will do. They missed Valentine's, which I understand is easy because every year they move the date around. But like two years ago, I think it was January 23rd. It does sneak up on you. So what I want to do is look at Hallmark holidays. And hopefully you can walk away from this with something that you could sell. You know, maybe an idea or two that you can take and put on the streets. And this is going to start, uh, startle you, but I'm going to start with April Fool's Day. I love April Fool's Day. It is my holiday. Uh, and I know that April Fool's Day terrifies radio, and I've never quite understood that. In all of the years I've been in radio, I have twice, twice seen April Fool's jokes that went backwards. And I've done everything. I've done underground theme parks. I've done websites for uh, uh, uh early childhood cosmetic surgery because no no parent should have to suffer through an ugly child. And the uh, one of the testimonials was from this woman about how her daughter, Tiffany, was three and she'd already had 28 procedures and she was going to be in a beauty pageant if she could just focus. It's fun, Cuban Seattle, you know, every, well, fun by my, my six standards. Cuban Seattle every year did an April Fool's joke that they would be flooded with calls and emails from people going, you got me. Again, I knew it was coming. I can't believe you got me. The two times it failed was one time where WNOR in Norfolk scared the listeners. They scared the listeners that a landfill was going to explode. That's not funny. Don't scare the listeners. And the other time it went south was where a station included McDonald's and their chicken sandwiches in an April Fool's bit without asking McDonald's. So if you have a client that is fun, a cool client, involve them. And, you know, the, the, and we all know these people. Go to them and say, hey, you know, here's what we want to do. You want to be a part of it. And that's what Mix in Cincinnati, and I'm going to reference Hubbard in Cincinnati several times. What they did was they included or involved a local small airline for new nonstop service to Lincoln. It was an eight-minute flight. But it was done very seriously. You know, the morning show went along so they could do a testimonial about the in-flight service and the cuisine and how it was amazing. They involved the client. Now, this would blow the minds for some selector geeks. But this is something you could do and involve the clients. The Drew Carey Show, and by the way, this is something uh, that was ripped off from print media. For April Fool's, print media will often put some fake ads in the paper. Go find them, cut it out, mail it, whatever. Let us know online that you found the fake ad for Bob's used auto glass and win a prize. The Drew Carey Show um, put, I think it was something like 13 or 14 mistakes on the Drew Carey Show. Find them all and win a trip to be on the Drew Carey Show. You could do this on your website. Hide mistakes throughout the website, or you could do it, and this would involve the client. It would involve their participation. It would involve them having to do this and you having to trust them that they would do this, but propagating their 
website, I don't even know if propagates the right word, uh, with mistakes. I love April Fools. I don't understand why we should miss it. Easter, obviously the most dangerous of all the holidays. I think April Fools is dangerous. Oh my God, the carnage. April Fool or Easter. When I look at holidays, um, I dissect them. You know, what are your dissectable elements for Christmas? Well, they're Santa, snow, toys, sleighs, stockings, lights. There's a lot. Easter, your dissectable elements to play around with are bunnies, bonnets, baskets, jelly beans, ham. Uh, one of the things we discovered during COVID is that brackets just don't have to be for March. The brackets work. Now, there are some stations that there's galleries versus brackets. Galleries would be baby idol. Submit a photo of your baby. Or one of the stations did big hair for Bon Jovi. They had 700 entries from women showing off their hair from, you know, 1986. Uh, but some stations just in, this is not a slight or a slam on them, are unable to get entries. If you ask them in very successful stations, hot in, in DC, amazing. They can't get an entry. Brackets are simple. You have 16 things. All people have to do is just vote on them. What they do at uh, KYXY in San Diego, they've done some amazing brackets. They did back to school fashions. They did school lunch menus, school food that uh, their listeners, 42 year old women would have eaten in the San Diego public schools and you voted. Sponsored by a grocery store and five uh, listeners were randomly selected for $100 gift cards. A bracket for Easter could be a basket bracket. Things that are great in Easter baskets. If you put those awful circus peanuts on there, I will immediately vote it out. But that could be a bracket. If you have not done a diaper, Carl, then you have not lived. Um, it can be done for many uh, holidays. It can be done as leprechaun races for St. Patrick's Day. Uh, K-Hits in Tulsa did it as bunny races for Easter. They did it at a shopping mall. And these things always get TV coverage. And there's something stupid about little kids with bunny ears and cotton balls on their, on their diapers crawling across a shopping mall floor in hopes of winning a thousand dollar scholarship or something uh, while their parents scream at them. Uh, and the promotion director said, no, we're not going to get TV coverage. We didn't even get TV coverage when we had a hostage situation at the station. I, uh, I said, no, just got to trust me on this. And they got two TV stations. So that could be something. Um, I would say for every Hallmark holiday, there's something that I call the Big Bang Boom promotion. The thing that kind of eclipses everything else that's being done in the market. This would be something. And Ben FM in Philadelphia just did it as the super crawl. For, um, for Super Bowl. Instaham, simple. Uh, have people, I and mean, we can overthink prizes. A ham the week before Easter is a fantastic prize. If you've given away a turkey the week before Thanksgiving, you know, will know of what I'm speaking. Have people Instagram and hashtag Easter related tasks like dying eggs, something like that. If you have done an Easter egg hunt. You will know that these are events that will put gray hair on your head or hair back on your head so that it could turn gray. Uh, and it's never the kids, it's the parents. The XL Energy Center in St. Paul does an Easter egg hunt on their website every year. And the prizes are fantastic. It's the concert venue, so they, you know, it's play and stay packages. So you go see a band and stay at the St. Paul Hotel. Uh, it's parking, it's just any number of things. They hide eggs all over the, uh, the, the, the XL Energy Center site. You find one, click on it, you'll get a little pop-up so you can enter your email. For every egg you find, you get an entry into a drawing. And I know people who do this every year. It's really amazing. Your next opportunity, Administrative Professionals Day. Uh, it is the 26th this year. There are a whole bunch of meters and diaries sitting out there in cubicles and at workplaces waiting to be romanced, waiting for somebody to come out and acknowledge their existence. Administrative Professionals Day or Secretary's Day is literally the best excuse to market at work. I returned to Hubbard in Cincinnati. 
my little clicker thing is not working today, so I'm scrolling. They've done an administrative appreciation night. Uh, it's a great event. It's upscale cocktails, food, some entertainment, some prizes, karaoke. Uh, they've also done it for Nurses Day. Uh, and the nursing industry or the healthcare industry, by the way, is one of the easiest to activate. Because these people work in close contact with each other for insane periods of time. If you ask them to go out and do stuff together, they will do it. So they've done this as Nurses Night Out. Um, by the way, food for, for at-work marketing has always worked. Um, but it's not that creative. Usually we just have people enter and tell us where they work and we show up. What Q105 in Tampa did was they did an undercover boss or undercover employee, I'm sorry. And they would have you let us know where you listen at work. And then they would have somebody go out dressed as a UPS driver or other delivery driver to the workplace. And if they caught you listening, that's when you won the full smorgasbord for everybody at work. Spa packages work for uh, Secretary's Day. The best variation of that that I've ever seen was Alice in Denver, where they brought the spa to you. They showed up at your workplace with a masseuse and a hair and mani and all that stuff, and it was done on spot in your cubicle. It was very user friendly. You didn't have to drive across town and, uh, and, and, and pick up a card or a gift card and then drive back across town to use it. The big bang boom for, <clears throat> for, for, for Secretary's Day or Administrative Professionals Day was done by KMOD in Tulsa, where and, and everybody, it's a shared experience. Everybody has worked at a place that has a piece of crap copying machine. One workplace was allowed to bring their piece of crap copying machine out. It was hoisted to the top of a crane and dropped. And they had ground zero mic and it sounded like a nuke going on. Um, the prize was food for everybody, some time out of the office, and while they were going, a new copying machine on trade was delivered. Um, going back to food, coffee, that's a universal for at work people. Been done as mug shots for people who, people who have coffee mugs generally or often, they're specific to something that they like. It could be their alma mater. Uh, I steal coffee mugs from, from hotels and I've got a whole bunch of them and quite proud. So mug shots could be something for Secretary's Day. Take a photo of your beloved coffee mug, post it, share it and maybe you get some coffee. SOB, Secretaries on Break. It was done by one of the stations in Phoenix. It was an after work party at a hotel that had an outdoor pool. They had some reggae music, they had some cocktails. If you say SOB on the air, it will be the message that cuts through all the other uh, Secretary's Day clutter. Earth Day, April 22nd, we go back a few days. This is a great opportunity. Um, the first thing you should always know is what your client's hot buttons are. Uh, I know that for one of the stations, you know, everybody asks the salespeople to go out and monitor other radio stations. One of my friends tasked her sales staff to go and troll them on Facebook because and, and Instagram because social media is the greatest window to your soul that there is. It's, it's, it's out there. And if you're into high school football, then it's going to be out there. If you're into travel, then it's going to be out there. If you're into uh, donating blood, then it's going to be out there. So if you find, then, then what you do is you return to them with a promotion saying, hey, you know what we want to do for, for Valentine's Day? We want to have a phlebotomist dressed up as vampires. And we want to do a blood drive in your, drive, in your, in your parking lot. Knowing that, you know, he's a, he's a 10 gallon a year person or whatever that is, uh, you've kind of painted him into the corner and you've pushed a hot button. It's a little sleazy, but then so is radio. So looking at, you know, the social media of your clients, if, if any of them are green, well then that's something you should be uh, playing with. Um, transit companies. This is often the one time of the year when they come to radio and they want us to do stuff with them. Uh, great. One of the things that I've seen stations do is have the air staff ride a bus all day. In one of the stations, they had like a fajita bar or an omelet bar on the bus, but it was just encouraging people to use the bus all day, and they were out there riding. KJ 103, 
in Oklahoma City did a wedding on a transit bus. So if the transit company is is into this kind of stuff and is open and you know to a promotion for Earth Day, and this would be the day of the year for them to do it, uh, you should be hitting them up. This is going to sound impossible, but it has been done. Listener-powered radio. Kiki Love, Steve Kicklighter at 103.5 KISS FM in Boise, did the biggest awareness campaign in radio. It was called Live for 175. And he has, you know, and I've known Steve for a long time. I've reached that point where I couldn't, it would have been uncool for me to ask him, you know, what's your, your sleep issue? He doesn't sleep. He has, he has a thing where he can't sleep. And so he used it to his advantage. Uh, his passion, the thing that he is uh, passionate about is child abuse and stopping it and shining a light on it. So he did live for 175 every year where he would stay awake for 175 hours and do something like mix. Uh, for one of the, and you can't just do the same thing every year, you always have to add it, it adds something to it. One year, they um, had it powered by listeners and they got exercise bicycles that were hooked to generators and teams of listeners from workplaces or from schools or from civic organizations or families came down and rode the bike for an hour, powered the broadcast. It was really cool. That would be the big bang boom. Um, actually, I take it back. You know what the big bang boom is? Something that McDonald's does every year. And by the way, tips. Let's, let's go back a bit. Tips. Whenever they're, the gas prices are high, that's something that you'll see on station sites where, you know, Bob the car, by the way, I'm using Bob as in a lot today. Bob the car mechanic, because all car mechanics are named Bob, is doing tips on, on how to uh, save fuel. This could be something uh, you could do for Earth Day. Uh, perhaps a HVAC person talking about how you can save your uh, on, on your heating bill or on your air conditioning bill. Here's some easy tips that even somebody who failed shop class can do at their own home. Um, the tips thing would be fantastic. And again, the mechanic stuff in terms of you know, hey, just getting a tune-up once a year will add you know 0.2 miles, you know, a gallon or whatever. Don't drive with your windshield or with the windows down. So this is the big bang boom, at least in the Twin Cities. Something McDonald's does every year. They get branded saplings, little baby trees. And it's a first come, first served at all of the McDonald's in the Twin Cities on Earth Day. Go and get one of these things and it's free. And while you're there, buy something and use the tray liner and fill it out and mail it in. And three people in the Twin Cities get randomly picked to have huge full grown trees delivered and planted in their yards. If you're a homeowner, <laughs> a tree's a pretty good prize. If you're in an environment, it kind of sucks, but you still got your you know, egg McMuffin. But you know, that's, that's the big part. Prom. Uh, no, I did not go to prom with this girl. Um, that would have been over kicking the coverage way more than I'm capable of. But prom is a great opportunity and you don't have to be a CHR. Um, you could do ghosts of proms past. You know, again, go to social media. What do people do? People will post retro photos of themselves from high school. Great. Do ghosts of proms past and post your prom photo. The great thing about fashion and hair and all of this stuff is that it is cyclical. And years later, you can look back and you can make fun of it. So um, that would be one opportunity for, um, for your web. Um, Gallery versus bracket. A bracket, now that would be a gallery. Uh, bracket would be prom food. There are restaurants in every market that are prom destinations. And for me, when I went to prom uh, in, in 2002, uh, it would have been Four Paws, Camel, I was joking about that, Camelot, um, uh, the North Star Room. So do a prom food bracket of old restaurants. You know, I was listening to WCCO in the Twin Cities and they were talking about it was one of those topics, by the way, that just got out of hand. He couldn't corral it and get it back because everybody wanted to chime in. What restaurants do you miss in the Twin Cities? I pulled over to a little rest area because you're not supposed to talk on your phone in the car here and called in. He's, I had to talk about the brothers' restaurants. So a bracket of old restaurants would be great. Sponsored again by anybody. Gowntown. This would be... Oh, by the way, for 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 uh, for for that last photo, it could be a caption contest, and, and the caption would be, "Damn, that's a lot of wicker." 
downtown would be a big bang boom. This started at Wild in Tampa. Catholic Charities of Tampa came to them and said, listen, would you help us collect used prom dresses? You know, they're just sitting in classes. We want to clean them and get them out to young women in the community who can't afford to go to prom. It's just out of their league. It's, the, the, it's, it's, it's too expensive. We'll get them free prom dresses. That group is something that Kiss and Charlotte did as downtown, where they collected the dresses, they were cleaned, and then one day they went on sale. No dress more than $25. All the money went to charity. When they did it at KDWB in Minneapolis, it looked like Filene's. They had a slow-mo cam of the doors opening up and women and young women and their moms are pouring into the store to get the bargains. It's been done at a lot of stations. If, uh, if, 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 if the window is open, I think you should do it. It's absolutely amazing. You could also do promptourage makeovers for young women. Give you know for uh, for a listener and and her friends, give them hair and makeup and nails and everything for for prom night. You could also do it, and again, it doesn't have to be for a CHR for other formats for women who are still best friends with their friends from high school. Send them out for a belated prom night, promptourage, dance prom. Uh, the first time it was done, it was cool. Second Chance Prom pretty much has become just a club night. The best variation of Second Chance Prom was done by uh, Oldies Radio in Hawaii. And it was amazing. They really got into the theme of prom. The air staff dressed up as chaperones circa 1962. They had a woody, you know, the, the station wagon with the wood paneling, the beach boys would have driven. They had a woody in the middle of the dance floor, around the side of the dance floor. And that's where your prom photo was taken. They had just a zillion clients involved. You know, this is the official limousine. This is the official dinner. This is the official this, official that. Second chance prom can be more than a club night. Movies are the entertainment universal. More people like movies than, I mean, it, it, it's the universal. If you went out and talked to a thousand people at a mall, uh, 999 would say that they like movies. That's pretty huge. They might disagree with what kind of movies they like. You could do a prom movie bracket. Have it sponsored by a local movie theater or by a restaurant or by whoever. But a prom movie bracket would be great because there are a million prom movies. Up next, Mother's Day. During the death spiral of, of 102 Jams in Orlando, they missed Mother's Day. Now, I can understand that because according to Coleman research, only 6% of people have mothers. The rest of us are aliens or spores. So missing it would, it's, it's, not, a, it's not a universal. It's not something that everybody you know, can, can enjoy or expect or engage in. Um, so, so doing something with Mother's Day, I mean, you gotta do it. And usually with Mother's Day, it's something a little bit more warm and fuzzy. Uh, one of the stations in Fargo did text us your mess. What a great prize. $900 closet system. It doesn't necessarily have to be a closet system. It could be home cleaning. Text your mess. Um, Momtourage. Be the enabler. Give mom and her friends a night out, kind of like promtourage. Momtourage. But with Mother's Day, you also need to be have a hook because hopefully everybody is doing something with Mother's Day. So maybe bringing it down into a genre like what Hubbard in Cincinnati has done with, uh, with, with, with work forces, you could do this. It could be single mothers. It's done by KGGI. It could be military moms. If you did something a military mother's day and you salute military mothers, you would have to go way overboard trying to screw that up. And also what client is going to go, whoa, wait, no, 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 no. Hey, hold on, hold there. Just one second. I don't really want to salute or honor our US military. You just painted them into a corner. Uh, they did mammograms at uh, SFM in Dallas. I lost my mind for a second. Mother daughter look alike. Uh, oh, by the way, mammograms was mothers and their daughters going out and getting screened for breast cancer and then having a lunch. Mother daughter look alike contest, sponsored by a spa. Uh, I thought this was great. This has been done by 97 Rock and Buffalo. Mothers who look like celebrities. That was fantastic. Um, hiatus from housework. Get a day, a day off. 
away from work or away, you know, from, away from home, and we'll come and we'll do the cleaning. So hiatus from housework, we'll have a cleaning service come while we send you and the kids to a theme park. Baby bumps is done by KZHT in Salt Lake City, sponsored by a client, uh, women who had, were pregnant, NASCAR'd their belly with a station slogan and with the client slogan, and the prizes I believe were diapers and baby food. All easily get from, easily gettable, not really a, a term, but. And then finally, the Bitchin' Kitchen, done by Hot and Sudbury up in Ontario. Mom won a kitchen. It was a great prize. Uh, it was a, a, a home furnishings kind of place. And then they also got, you know, the, the washer and the dryer and the, uh, the, the, the dishwasher and the stove and all of that stuff. The Bitchin' Kitchen. Cinco de Mayo. This can be more than just a club night. There's a lot more that we can do with Cinco de Mayo than just, you know, uh, um, a club night. You need a hook. One possible hook would be the human pinata, which was uh, done in Colorado Springs where listeners came down and beat balls off a uh, personality. And I think really it would just be an excuse to say, beat the balls off Dave. Uh, each ball had a prize and you uh, you won whatever was on the prize. So the human pinata. Uh, cool in um, Denver did random acts of mariachis. It was done with a restaurant that delivers food to offices. So food was delivered on Cinco de Mayo, but was delivered and accompanied by mariachis. The big bang boom. Chihuahua races. It's been done by Petco here. It was done by 92.5 or 92.5 Maxima in Tampa. Uh, these things are bug lights for TV coverage. So Chihuahua races would be fantastic. Um, it really touches into you know social media, and social media is all about kids and pets. Going back to when COVID hit. And we were trying to be supportive of struggling local restaurants. Intercom in Chattanooga did a gallery or a bracket for the best Mexican restaurant in town. And um, because apparently Mexican restaurants are a big deal in Chattanooga. When I've been to Chattanooga, I didn't recognize that. I will next time. Uh, it was a 16 restaurant bracket of local, locally owned mom and pop uh, Mexican restaurants. The Mexican restaurant that had the most votes want to schedule on the radio station, five random people were picked to have their dinner bought for them at the restaurant. So that could be your uh, your ode to, to Cinco de Mayo. And it goes again back to, to, um, to social media. You know, if I got on social media and said, you know, I think Zantigo's has the best Mexican food in the Twin Cities, there would be people most assuredly who would agree with me. And then there would be people who would eviscerate me and wonder if I was out of my freaking mind. I'm not. It is. It is. It is the best. It gives your audience uh, an opportunity to to voice their opinion. Graduations. Again, it just doesn't have to be for CHRs. One thing that you could do is do grads now and then. It could be a gallery, photos of your friends on grad night, and photos of you with your friends now. Uh, Congratulations or congrat, yeah, congratulations. It's an old newspaper bit where people will buy little ads in the newspaper we'll go for five bucks, wishing my little pumpkin congratulations for graduating. And then you can try to find your little graduation announcement, you know, in a 35 pages of graduation announcements. Congratulations would be a scroll across the top of the screen. Don't charge money for it. Just have people submit the, uh, the message and let them know approximately when it's gonna scroll across the top of the screen. Your client's messages would be interspersed and injected into the ongoing scroll. Uh, by the way, screen for hooligans. The other thing to think about for graduations is, and I'm, I've gone through this recently, my, my graduation party was having the cousins over for cake. Graduation parties now are a competitive arena and they will bankrupt families. What if you gave away a graduation party? through a client. The station will come out and spin records, we'll have food, save some poor family. And our, our friends at A to Z Party Rental will do the tent, but give away a graduation party. Uh, 
this would be big. This was done as uh, the Super Bowl at, again, Hubbard in Cincinnati, where people kicked their shoes at a target. You could do this with listeners throwing mortar boards at a target. Uh, it is a big night, graduation night for parties and partying safely. One of the things that I saw uh, Kiss and Boise do, which I thought was absolutely amazing, and it could be sponsored by uh, an insurance company, get law enforcement involved. The afternoon, D I mean, say the night DJ went out and got himself arrested for a DUI. Not really, but he did. I and mean, the local law enforcement, you know, participated. He got pulled over. He got breathalyzed. He got taken down. It showed that this is not really a pleasant experience. This is something that we would probably want to avoid. Uh, this is a great time of the year that responsible broadcasters would get that message out. Uh, there will be lock-in parties. If there's a chance for you to go out and crash these lock-in parties, that's great. And crash with their permission, we'd like to show up at 2 a.m. Uh, for the private parties, we go back to food delivery, go out and deliver food, pizzas all night long to the private parties. Um, I, I brought this up to, to somebody and and they, I may have all suggested putting bunnies in a blender. And that was iPad or uh, iGrads, which was sponsored hours of music from midnight to 6 a.m. Now, Mark Adams with iHeart in, in San Francisco took the completely different angle. I said, yeah, if I could pick up a meter at three in the morning, yeah, I would do it. So the idea would be that I'm having a grad party at my house and here are 12 songs I'd like to hear. So at 12 o'clock, this hour of music is going out to Paige and his friends at his house. Congratulations, graduating class in 2004 from Forest Lake High School, whatever. Uh, I grad. Possibly a way to, and who cares what music it is? It doesn't matter. It's two in the morning. I grads. Memorial Day and Victoria Day. Three day weekends. You should always know where your listeners are going to go for three day weekends. Um, in Philadelphia, they go to the Jersey Shore. So Q102 once did Ice Station Q, and they set up at a highway rest area on the way to the shore. You could pull off and have your coolers filled with ice, courtesy of a client. I think the client was McDonald's, because they have a ton of ice, or they make a ton of ice. Um, you can overthink pricing. You know, ice, heading into a long weekend, it was a great prize. Knowing where people are, you know, where are they going to be? WIOG and Saginaw identified the thumb. It's a region or part of, of, of Michigan. The thumb is where people were going to be. So they MacGyvered away to be up there. They went and broadcast from a campground. They sounded like what their audience was going through. They were up there, they were broadcasting. I believe it was sponsored by a soft drink or a beer and they were roasting marshmallows and they were just communing with the listeners. Um, in, in Atlanta, oh, and also, uh, it's a big weekend for barbecuing, I should say that. So Ben FM in Philadelphia did a, a weekend or a week of, of, of a barbecue bracket, the best barbecue in, in Philadelphia. Okay. In Atlanta, Power 96.1 identified pools. Pools is where, or pools is where, pools are where their audience is on summer weekends, three-day weekends, two-day weekends, five-day weekends, it doesn't matter, that's where they are. So they went out and crashed them. It's not, it's not rocket science, it's radio. They got soft drinks, they got food, and they went around and just hit pool parties all weekend. They did it for the audio, and they did it for the social media posts. It sounded great. It reminded me of the best sounding promotion ever was the Extreme Radio Beach House in Hawaii, where they broadcast a shift a day from a beach house on the North Shore of Oahu. And they had 200 people, 200 listeners a day were invited. Every day it was catered by a different client. It was a big deal. I mean, it was, I mean, to put on. It was hard, but it was run entirely by the interns. The interns owned the third floor of this house. The house was walled. Uh, it was owned by a realtor. I'm doing the thing with the fingers, owned by a realtor. No, I think he sold weed. But anyway, he rented the house for the summer to the station and they broadcast from there. And it sounded amazing. It was, you, know, you have so many people who don't remember what great sounding radio is. Um, meet and greet. Or tweet your meet. 
What do people do on three-day weekends? They barbecue. Well, great. And they're going to, hey, I'm, I'm guilty of it too. I went last summer to this local butcher and I got two of the greatest steaks in the history of mankind. And I posted the photos, photos to social media. Well, if people are going to post photos to social media, they should do it with you too. So tweet your meat, uh, show us your meat, which by the way, would just sound great on the air. Meet and greet, bring meat to barbecues, courtesy of your grocery store or butcher. That's the vibe. For, for summer, summer and summer weekends. Um, our listeners take a giant left turn off the freeway of life on Friday afternoon at five, and usually we plow ahead sounding <laughs> unchanged. Um, weekend contests are what I call vibe promotions. They are your opportunity to break away from group contesting or whatever you're doing during the week and have a theme. The theme is bigger than the prize. You don't have to have a great prize. It's the theme. But you know what, what are good prizes? Uh, well, uh, gas, <laughs> uh, tickets, tickets to miniature golf, it doesn't matter. It's, it is all uh, lifestyle. Speaking of lifestyle, um, well, going back, well, really, quick, really quick, umbrellas. The reason to have a summer umbrella is to tie everything together that you're going to do. KDWB was the first station to do the summer of 10,000 tickets. We did it because they literally had so many tickets, it was insane. So as opposed to doing, well, we're gonna do these tickets, we're gonna do these tickets, they tied them all together. It was the summer of 10,000 tickets because Minnesota is the land of 10,000 lakes. If you're going to do a find yourself with um, something that you're gonna be doing a lot of, like in the Twin Cities going out to the beaches, we did uh, the beach patrol during the summer. Um, then that could be your umbrella. I've seen it go south. One of the stations in Oklahoma City did the Pepsi summer. Pepsi bought the radio station. And yes, they spent a tremendous amount of money to do that, and I'm not a communist. But they sounded like the, the radio stations ceased to be an entity. Pepsi was the major focus. There can be a way that they can be melded. If you're going to do a summer umbrella that is sponsored, it needs to be done deftly. Going back to identifying what is specific for the summer. In, um, in, in Phoenix, as an example, in Phoenix, what do, station, what do people do? They have garage or uh, car washes during the summer. That's not necessarily a theme, but it's, it's what people do in Phoenix during the summer. In the Twin Cities, it's again, it's going to the lakes, the lake going up north, it's going to the beaches. At KC 101 in New Haven, in 2020, when people are staying closer to home, they called the summer take a hike because that's what their listeners were going to do. And everything was based around hiking and shoes and gorp and water bottles and backpacks and all of that. They identified something that you know people were going to be doing, and that's what it became. Um, outdoor theaters. If you have an outdoor theater, a drive-in theater, theater in your market, there's so much that you can do with it. I saw the station in Fresno did a food drive at a drive-in theater for Thanksgiving. Uh, if you don't have drive-in theaters, one of the things that Wild did in San, Jose, in San Francisco, but they did it in San Jose and it was sponsored by Pepsi, was they went out and they did movie nights in parks during the summer. Those big inflatable screens, uh, come out with your family, grab a blanket, we'll have free Pepsi, enjoy a movie. Uh, it was a great marketing for the radio station. It really helped them break into San Jose when they realized that that was their, their new target. They had gotten as many listeners as they could in San Francisco. It's now time to, to move south, so to speak. These are the WBHJ heat beaters. Gene Ashley at Star FM in uh, Kansas City was the first person I saw to do popsicle drops. And with her own money, she went to Costco and bought frozen treats, and she went out to people who are working outside in the summer. Landscapers, 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 uh, road construction, whatever, people who are working outside and brought them treats. I've seen it done with a bunch of stations with just hands of soda. Um, here in uh, Birmingham, which in, it is in fact hot in Birmingham during the summer, it was uh, like popsicles and, and treats from DQ. Now I am in promotions, so, here you go. Here's your contest. Identify the young woman in this photo. 
She is married to a uh, very well-known American uh, radio personality. ID, ID her. Email me at pageninauber at gmail.com who she is or who she is married to. And uh, you will not get a cassette from the prize closet, but you will get a free copy of my book, The Encyclopedia of Radio Promotions, which you can purchase at cpr-promotions.com uh, for $99. It Literally 10,000 sellable ideas are in there, but you can get it for free if you identify this person. Uh, patrols, I mentioned it earlier. In Charlotte, North Carolina, where do people go? If they don't go to the beach, if they don't go to the mountains, they stick close to like apartment complex swimming pools. It was sponsored by Yoohoo. Uh, the number one soft drink for pale kids with really small heads. And uh, we went out and you who sponsored us going out to pools every day because that's where people were. Uh, the, you know, in Minneapolis, the Beach Patrol was sponsored by Budweiser. We were the de facto street team for Budweiser. We had a Jeep and every day we would just hit the beaches. We hit the lakes and there are a hundred of them in the Twin Cities. Uh, what else happens in this summer? And I mentioned that with Phoenix car washes. These are all, almost all charity, uh, churches, high school youth groups, cheerleaders, bands, whatever. Uh, cool 108 in Minneapolis did garage sale finder. So if you're having a garage sale, which is a very Minnesota thing to do, let us know where your garage sale is and we'll have it you know, on the site. So if you're looking to go buy uh, a piece of driftwood with footprints in the sand, wood burned into it for 25 cents, here's all the places you could probably find it. Uh, one of the stations did it with Girl Scout cookie finder. If you're a Girl Scout cookie sailor, salesperson, you and your mom and dad, tell us where you're gonna be on sale. I'm gonna be outside a liquor store. By the way, every liquor store where I live has Girl Scout cookies being sold outside. I don't get it. Uh, I don't see the correlation. You could do car wash finder. So if your high school cheerleading squad is gonna do a cheerleading car wash, uh, well, you know, the radio station and our friends at client have a list of where they all are. The other thing is, if you need a hook for your for your remote or appearance, open it up and invite the cheerleading squad to come down and do it at your place, you know, in the parking lot of your client. You need a hose and you need water. Uh, going back to, to the weekends, uh, oh, summer safety. There's, there's another thing. CBS in Las Vegas made summer safety their focus a couple of years ago because there was uh, just a disproportionate number of pool accidents happening. So summer safety could be something that is sponsorable or uh, for a client. I mean, it would be difficult to find a client that said, no, no, we don't want to keep our listeners from, you know, uh, having their feet run over with lawnmowers or whatever the safety issue is in your summer. Uh, we can overthink pricing. Rick Thomas, when he was at Z90 in San Diego, destroyed the phone system locally when he gave away swimsuits on the air. It was the incredible bikini jam, women's swimwear, phones exploded. Um, K hits in Oklahoma City, or in Tulsa, did it as the bikini wax weekend, where they mixed all weekend long and you won bikinis. And again, huge prizes. Up next, everybody. Father's Day. Okay. If you did warm and fuzzy for Mother's Day, Father's Day, maybe you go the other way. Maybe you have some fun. Maybe you do a little, you know, tongue in the cheek stuff. So, um, and this is not necessarily tongue in the cheek, but um, Alpha Media in um, Canton, Ohio, did Papa's Got a Brand New Grill. I don't want to be stereotypical, but grilling is associated with fathers. In San Francisco, we did a we did a barbecue cook-off with ten fathers. We provided the meat, we provided the grills, we provided the charcoal that was sponsored by uh, Lowry Seasoning Salt and a grocery store. And the listeners voted on who, which father had the best uh, uh, barbecue. Um, Jerry Springer, he did all of our research for us. One of the things that he did was, uh, in, in, in a, when I started this job, the first thing that happened almost immediately was that I was in a limousine accident. So I spent the first two weeks of this job in bed. And so I finally, I had never watched daytime TV before because I had a job. And so I, was, I dove into Jerry Springer and, and Montel and uh, Sally Jesse, and you realize that they really had six or seven topics that they had in heavy rotation. One of them was, my mom dresses too damn sexy. 
Well, the flip side would be to do Father's Day makeovers because every kid at one point or another has been humiliated by what their father wears. It's a universal. It happens. We have to acknowledge it. That is something that you could do. You could do it as pimp my pop. Uh, the young woman who does my uh, digital stuff was our exchange student when she was 16 and had apparently hidden the fact that she was embarrassed by everything pretty much about me. So when I went to Vancouver to work with her on something, I was ambushed. And she had a videographer. It was a day of transformation. And she took me out for hair, clothes, glasses. Uh, I guess she felt comfortable once I was across the border with telling me that I look, look like crap. So you could do pamper your papa. Stepfather's Day. Like we did with Mother's Day, break it down in genres. Maybe it's Stepfather's Day. It would, it would be something that would be different from what everybody else is doing. And that is usually good. Uh, one of the stations did this and they did, they did, oh, I'm sorry, they did overprotective Father's Day and you won uh, a shovel and black plastic and some uh, twist ties. The Big Boy Toy Show, done by the station in Fresno, uh, at a, at a uh, dealer of ATVs and, and four wheelers and motorcycles and all of that stuff, the Big Boy Toy Show. This was great, done by Wild in Tampa. Oh, by the way, going back to uh, genres of fathers, deployed dads. Again, it's like military moms. Honor fathers who are away serving their country. Who wouldn't want to sponsor that? Wild in Tampa did, did a Father's Day promotion where dad and the kids went to Bush Gardens and the wife, I, I hope they included her. And while they were all away, they did all of the yard work. They cleaned the cars, they got the gutters, they did all of that stuff. Um, this was done by KLUC in Tampa. One of these virile specimens won a fitness club membership, uh, free clothing and a haircut. Um, could also be done, I guess, for, for the guy on, on, on the right, it could be the extreme comb over. Fourth of July in Canada Day. Google changes their image every day. I don't see why we can't do that too. Uh, it's a Saturday in the US and a Tuesday in Canada. Uh, the coolest, and this is Big Bang Boom, and it's extremely easy to do. This is not arduous to do. Uh, I think this is the third time I've used arduous. Have people record or send in a file of a message for somebody who they love, a friend, a family member, a neighbor, a coworker, who is deployed. Fourth of July weekend, every hour you run these messages. You let them know in advance when their message is going to run. The messages are tagged with a client's message. Uh, you also get a copy of it as it ran and send it to the service person wherever they are deployed. That's the big bang boom. Uh, in regards to summer festivals, it is a universal that the porta potties are funked up by about 12 noon. And so what could we could possibly do is go out and have our own porta potty. It was done first by Cube in Seattle at Seafair. They got their own porta potty. It was a nice one. Inside it had a little shelf like, a, what am I trying to say? Oh, oh, Planet Hollywood. It had designer imposter fragrances, all that stuff. You want a VIP, P E E pass, sponsored by a beer because beer and festival porta potties go hand in hand. Here it is in, uh, at Beale Street Music Fest in Memphis. These were the hottest prize the station had ever given away. And the other thing you want to do at these events is have a charging station. I was at this event at the Beale Street Music Fest. We were in our little compound and people were coming up. They were like refugees trying to get out of Saigon. They all had phones. Could you charge our phones? So do charging. I am now a consumer of 4th of July. After working 4th of July for years and years and years, I now go to 4th of July events. And they're not easy. You have to park a mile away, then you have to find a little square of sod to sit down and you sit there for hours and you wait. Is there a cool viewing platform or a place that you can have a party, a sponsored party, just for invited or for winners and valued clients? In Minneapolis, it would be the balcony at these, uh, Historical Museum, the Historical Society, has a great view of uh, the taste of Minnesota fireworks. In Sacramento, 
it was from a blimp circling Cal Expo. How cool is that? Um, Sixth Street in, in Austin, Texas, that's where the fireworks are. And it is just a sea of humanity. The Beat did their party on the roof of a bar. Literally and metaphorically, they were above the listeners. It was just cooler. On the roof, they had a grill and they had hot dogs and they had a keg of beer. On the third floor of this bar, right below where the party was on the roof, they had a locking toilet. That's the hook, that's the hook right there. Plus the fact that you don't have to be rubbing shoulders and other body parts with thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of sweaty Texans. Uh, a viewing party would be absolutely amazing. A database, something that print media does. We should do it, it should be sponsored. Here's a list, again, courtesy of ourselves and our wonderful friends at Gutter Guard. Uh, here's a list of every parade, every festival, every fireworks in the surveyed area. I go back to uh, I go back to, to to grilling, tweet your meat, picnic packs. This was done by WPGC in Washington. WPGC in Washington, you won a fully prepared picnic. You just had to go to the grocery store to pick it up. Very similar to what Crater 96 has done in in Honolulu for Thanksgiving, where you won a fully prepared Thanksgiving meal. Everything is done. You just have to go to the Hyatt, identify yourself at food and beverage, pick it up, bring it home. Packing packs would be great. One final word about the 4th of July, and that would be in regards to remotes. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm not a socialist. I think we should make money, but there are a couple of times a year where we are setting ourselves up for failure. And selling a remote on the 4th of July is setting yourself up for failure. And it's going to be our fault for doing it. And they're going to come back and they're going to, nobody showed up. You know, nobody listens to you. No, it's because people have lives. I left a festival with 300,000 people in San Francisco to go do a car dealer remote. Guess how many people showed up? None. And then, of course, it was our fault. So that would be my suggestion. And now our final Hallmark holiday before we close this out. Back to school. Back to school is a Hallmark holiday. This was... Unbelievable. Hot 89.9 in Ottawa. In Ottawa is probably one of the top five, top 40s anywhere on the planet. They're just amazing. For them to get new listeners, they would have to breed the listeners that they already have and then wait. They did back to school Botox. For moms who are all exhausted and, and beat down after a full summer of taking care of the kids, uh, one mom got some cosmetic surgery. It cuts through all of the other drive, it cuts through all the, 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 the school supply drives and the other stuff. A car ride, also done as Loco for Limos by KGGI in Riverside, where you won a ride to school in a real car, in a really nice stretch, done by one of the Canadian stations with a client that had Ferraris. The morning guy drove two kids to school in a Ferrari, or drove a kid to school in a Ferrari. It was really cool. It was a great way to arrive on the first day of school. Principal for a day. If you're gonna do a school uh, spirit contest, and the best sponsors for school spirit contests are always soft drinks and fast food, it would be at the end of August or at the beginning of January. Those are the two times of year when kids are rested, they're easy to engage and to market to before they get lost in everything that's going on in school. Uh, Principal for a Day was done by Now FM in Indianapolis, this stands out because they had Justin Bieber. This is when he was just first hitting. Justin Bieber could be your school principal for a day. They got 1.9 million texts. It doesn't have to be Justin Bieber. It could be somebody spinning records for your prom. But if you're going to do a school spirit contest, that would be the time to do it. Um, the other thing you should know in terms of you know charities and stuff, Pizza Hut's charitable cause is reading. So bringing them some kind of back to school, elementary school reading contest where they get a pool party if they read their books, they would be more likely to do that than be excited about you coming and doing a remote at their place. Um, the Van, uh, Beat in Vancouver did camp, campus takeovers and every day for opening week or for, for the first week of school, they went out and spun records records at a, at a campus. They brought food and beverages and stuff like that. They were the first people you met 
when you arrived in Vancouver to go to school. KZIA and Cedar Rapids did it. And the air staff and the salespeople, everybody, was at the University of Iowa to greet students on move-in day and help them carry in their boxes and, and all their stuff. I've driven for eight hours. I'm terrified about going to school. My parents are here. They are a mess. The first people I meet are these people who help me move in. You may have just earned a fan. Not a lot of stations have, have, have fans. This traditionally is a time of year where we collect back to school supplies. That's great, as well we should. But you need a hook because everybody is collecting back to school supplies. Uh, the best one was done by 102 Jams in Orlando. And this was right prior to Y2K. And the presentation was that in preparation for Y2K, the school district was running a compliance check or whatever they're, they're checking their system. And it kicked out Paco Lopez's name. And it turned out that in sixth grade, Paco had taken out a book called, Yes, Bobby, Your Body is Changing, and hadn't returned it. And the fine was something like $17,000. So they called him up on the air and they said, first of all, nobody could be more surprised <laughs> that you made something of yourself. We're, we're stunned, frankly. But you got this big school fine. Uh, here's, here's what, we got, we got a lot of kids who are gonna go to school without supplies. Could you help us out? If you do, we'll click a couple of buttons and that fine will just disappear and we'll never talk about it again. There was a hook. There was a reason for them to be doing it. It's the same thing with Stuff the Bus, where you live on top of a school bus for a week to fill it with school supplies. The best school supply drive, and this would be the Big Bang Boom, was uh, done by 96.1 Now FM in San Antonio a couple of years ago, where teachers there have to buy supplies for themselves. So the station had partnered with a skydiving place, and the teacher that collected the most school supplies for her classroom got to skydive. And she was really cool. I mean, and she was, I forget, I want to say it was Rihanna, but she was singing something all the way down. It was really, really cool. Why should you donate? supplies to this person because maybe they'll have a chance to live their dream of skydiving. Uh, the dream dorm, this would be a big bang boom. Um, it could be done online. I did it in person. It was done at a shopping mall in Charlotte, North Carolina, where they built a dorm room in the middle of the mall. It was behind glass. And the mall was great because we're, we're not aesthetically minded. They did all of the work, they did the presentation. You could come and there was this dorm room, everything you would see in a dorm room, a computer, a rack of clothes, a bed, all this stuff, a mini refrigerator. And all of these were items that were contributed from stores inside the mall. The entry form was more or less a sheet of paper with every item on it. All you had to do was guess the total price to the penny of every item that was inside the dream dorm. And to do that, you took your form and you walked around the mall and you went into stores that had little signs that said dream dorm participant. And there's a polo shirt hanging on the rack and that's 19.99, okay, there we go. So if you had just basic math skills or a phone that had a calculator on it, you got the exact price uh, total to, to, to a penny. And then one person was pulled and they won it all. Could be done online where you create a dorm room online with lots of different items. I click on the item, it takes me to uh, Bob's house have used auto glass, and here's this, this auto glass for your car when you're, you're driving off to college, that's $36.99. So you'll be sending people to all of your clients' websites to get exact prices. I don't think that they're gonna argue with that. Um, it is a time of year where it is traditional to have cheerleaders on the air. That is good, you should. You will get ears in the classrooms. Sponsored usually by pizzas in Detroit. It was sponsored by Hungry Hungry, Hungry, yeah, Hungry Howies. What they did though, which was brilliant, was they did it with schools, athletes, not with cheerleading squads. And they did it through the entire year. Normally we end this thing when school football is over. No, it went through the entire year and they picked out the zip codes or the communities where they really needed to make an impact. So we really got a breakthrough in Romulus. Well, Romulus' football team sucks. Oh, wait, hey, hold on a second. The girls' swim team is really good. We'll have them come in. It was sponsored by Hungry Howers, Howies. They were fed, and they went back to the school with a trophy for, um, for, the, for the trophy case. 
We are almost done. Kate McGuire at Mix in Boise was unbelievable. She was fantastic. She did a thing called Kate University where every month she went out and did something she had never done before, like go to a driving range or skeet shooting or whitewater rafting or whatever with listeners who had also never done it before. It was great time, quality time with listeners. For back to school, she did cut the cord with Kate. And every day she went out with moms who were going through serious anxiety and um, did something. One day it was, you know, a, a, a book, wine and books or wine and painting. And then one day it was going to a movie. And then one day it was bowling. You could get five different clients involved with this for back to school. Cut the cord. And that's it. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for sitting through this. If you have any questions about what I do, let me know. Ed Mann with Man Group Radio handles all of my uh, barter in the U.S. if you're interested in that. Uh, I work with morning shows. I write copy. I mentor promotions directors. I work with program directors. I'm creating contests. And I work with the salespeople. We can make a lot of money. We just went through a situation with one of the Beasley stations where they had a client that was one of those, we don't advertise on the radio people. They, they say it kind of like with a sneer, like talking about, you know, uh, our neighbor, the pedophile. Now, we don't advertise on the radio, uh, but they were tipped that they did like creative stuff. So we created three promotions and they bought two of them for a staggering amount of money. So at the end of the day, ideas move spots. And I hope some of these will move spots with your station. Thank you.